Well, first things first, man, I gotta ask, how is everybody doing in Kansum at the moment? Good is everybody in a good place? Because we are getting closer to that release date. Yeah, man, very exciting. We posted um a few of the songs already. We did some music videos. So yeah, can't wait for March third for the record to come out. And actually, um fortunately enough, March third is the first day of our next tour. So yeah, very exciting. Yeah, ton, ton, a ton of American dates. Ton. It's gonna be yeah. uh, it's gonna be busy. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good though, right? Because obviously, you know, being busy now compared to the past previous couple of years is uh just well, I mean, that's 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 what you want to do. Certainly, yeah. Um definitely felt a little cooped up. What was that, about a year ago? And we've had now this will be the third US tour since the craziness so yeah yeah very exciting to get back to it starting to feel feel normal now yeah i think so yeah i think it's back to where it was yeah (laughs) yeah good 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 um yeah same over here as well in the uk other than like the surviving of venues that kind of the fallout from that and venues shutting down um we're kind of doing okay now totally totally glad to hear it well, obviously, this isn't your first rodeo uh, when it comes to releases. Do you enjoy this aspect of the uh, making music section? And I mean, the slow build, the drip feeding of content, the promotion of what you're doing. And considering how drawn out it can often be, how do you make it interesting for yourself? Fantastic question. I think I do enjoy it um, due to the fact that I believe Can Swim uh, releases music way more frequently than a lot of bands in our genre and scene. Um so I think it's probably all of our most uh, the thing that we we look forward to doing the most uh, to keep it exciting. I think we try to switch it up musically. I, I've seen a lot of comments on the internet now that it's kind of catching on that every release from the band sounds pretty different, looks pretty different. Uh, the overall theme of the art switches up. So yeah, I think that's kind of how we keep it exciting. Just try we try to make it feel like it's the first time we're doing it even though now it's like the seventh (laughs) so uh yeah with the rollout this rollout was particularly um rewarding because we did all the music videos ourselves we recorded the album ourselves we actually even shot the main photo of the four of us that we're using ourselves so yeah just trying to keep it uh all in house as much as we can and yeah it's been uh i can't wait to put it out you see, you, you seem uh, incredibly relaxed about the whole experience. Has it been, especially when you compare it to, say, the last album, 2021's Change of Plans, and considering what was going on in the world then, has it just been a very relaxing experience? You know, I'm glad you picked up on that. I actually, I do think it is just because I feel very, I don't want to use the word confident, but I feel very relaxed and content with with the release. I feel like it's very true to ourselves. I feel like because, like I said, we did it all ourselves. It came very naturally. I f- it feels very like hard on your sleeve. Where the previous records, you know, I think we were a little bit more uh, caught up on the success of the band and wanted to get bigger and blah, blah, blah. But now I think we're pretty happy with where we are. and We're just very blessed and feel very lucky to do it. Um, yeah, so I hope, I hope, I hate, that it maybe feels like I'm not as excited, but I think I'm I'm equally as excited. It just feels a little bit more relaxed and uh, confident of a release than maybe our previous works. I mean, that's what I think most people would want. They hear that you're confident and feeling relaxed about it. The last thing anyone would want to hear is that it was a stressful, oh my God, and we have no idea what people are going <laughs> to experience. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I said, because we did it all ourselves, we were just in the studio. Danny, our guitar player, was producing it, recording it. It was it was a blast. There was no stress. There was no trying to fit the mold. It was just the four of us making music. And yeah, I think that honestly is where we strive the best. And we seem to um, put out the best content that way. And I'm very happy that we went back to that. Oh, that's amazing to hear. But take me back um, to the early days of Thanks But No Thanks, the new album. In particular, what your vision uh, might have looked like. Did you have one or was it clear from the start what you wanted to do? So I had a a huge uh, hard drive of demos, if you will. I I write songs constantly. I'm always trying to 
uh, express myself and, and get get ideas onto paper or onto a um, music setting of my laptop. Uh, so I sent it all to Danny and I sent it to the rest of the guys. And yeah, this this album, I do think we kind of were like, okay, like all these songs are good. You know, Chris, you did a lot of homework. You got a lot of material here, but like what 10 um, kind of are the most cohesive to each other? And then or any of the ones out of those 10 can fit better. Maybe we can change certain things. And, you know, we really tried to make it feel the most can swim, the most, um, yeah, true to who we are. You know, some of those demos maybe were a little funky. Maybe they were kind of out of the left field. But, yeah, we, we, yeah, we scrapped those or we changed them to fit the sound. Um, yeah, I really think the 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 vision from the get-go was to do this was to make this kind of honest uh no tricks no smoke and mirrors album and yeah i, I do think we were pretty successful i think uh I, I i listened back to some of the demos and some of the things that changed and i was like yeah wow that actually sound ridiculous now in context with with what we had so yeah very happy very very blessed to have the guys in my band kind of take some of my ideas and stir them to be not so crazy and i i think that's what we came up with i mean well that's the experimentation start side right you know you're, you're a musician you're always going to want to experiment try new things so having that hard drive of these many many demos and seeing what they can turn into is uh i'd imagine that it's an incredibly exciting process particularly when you see the transformation of what you had to what it becomes it's sometimes even funny <laughs> how far they come <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, yeah, but yeah, very, very happy with how it came out. I'm very, very excited. <clears throat> Along the way, um, were there any particular moments that you can point at that had influence on the direction that the album would take, either positively or negatively? Um, d- during the recording process, or just mm, yeah, just or just yeah. in general, really. Yeah, I mean, I think um, one of the reasons why we picked this road this time is a lot to do with like our live show like um and kind of just playing to our strengths like danny uh our guitar player producer um is very adamant about me singing in in a natural way and and like you know let's let's say i sang a melody and it was pretty difficult or it had a run and he was just like hey like you can't do that that's not your kind of thing let's change it to something that is kind of natural to you so I think just like the last, what is it now, six, seven years of being in a band, mm-hmm. kind of just seeing what comes natural and what we're like good at and what, what, um, yeah, obviously, like you said, a musician is all about trying new things. But I do think all of us are inherently good at something or, or feel natural doing something. And I think that's what Danny was most adamant about doing in this process, just like what would you do in the forefront of your brain? Like what, what, like if this chorus came to you, what was the, what's the quickest first natural decision you would make and how would you sing it? And and that's kind of what we picked. So yeah, like I said, I think uh, a lot of that came from just being in a band together with each other and kind of seeing our faults and seeing our pros and cons. And I think this record is, uh, is very us. And I think that was the decision-making process of like, yeah, you kind of suck at singing that way, or you don't really write lyrics that way. It's not your kind of thing. You write from this kind of place. And yeah, that's that's what we decided on. But you'd still say you're testing yourself, you're still pushing yourself, because um, this is, this is only, it is very much a Can't Swim album, but like everything you've done up to this point, there is still development and evolution clear in the sound. Oh, 100%. I think, I think sometimes maybe it's even easier to throw something out of left field and make it sound different and make it sound original, but it's sometimes difficult to play within your parameters and make it sound creative and make it sound unique. And I think that was the biggest challenge for me personally. I was like, damn, are we really just doing like that similar kind of thing? And I was like, okay, like what can I do lyrically or melodically to make it stand out? And yeah, it, it, I think I, I, I was guilty of like, Oh, you know, this band like releases the same stuff all the time. But it's difficult. It's very difficult mm. to stay within those those boundaries. Um, and like you said, progress and, and try to make it feel like it's a better record than your previous one. And yeah, yeah, it was it was no walk in the park. Believe me. And like I said, there was 20 songs, 20 
to 25 songs that we had in the rig, had in the Pro Tools, and that we were nitpicking like, no, no, maybe this could change. You know, so it, it wasn't like, oh, just pick up your guitar and write 10 songs. Like it, it was it was meticulous for sure. <laughs> Considering you had 20 to 25, um, was it was it a fairly straightforward uh, process and a task amongst yourselves to decide what isn't going to work and what shouldn't go on the album? Uh, was there any particular one or two tracks that you kind of were like really debating over? It was challenging, right? It's like, you know, always very uh, insecure, right? I'm like, hey, Danny, like I got this great track. And he's just like, yeah, no, I don't think it works. You know, like, so I can't think of anything particularly, just because, like I said, we've been in a band now so long. There's not much ego. And also there's so much trust, you know, like they trust me to come up with the idea. And I certainly, um, they have certainly proven themselves to make my ideas better than they were. You know, I, I, I have no... Uh, I have all the faith in the world that I believe in that. And so with, when, when someone's just like, yeah, you know, it didn't really hit me. Like, I, I think that could be better. I just go, yeah, you're probably right. Then. You know, like it's so easy to get in your own head, right? You're, you're changing a million things. You got the demo and you send it and you think it's, you know, amazing. And then, you know, it, it, it's really nice to have this kind of positive feedback loop of, of close friends being like, mm. yeah, man, I think this, this is some of your best stuff this stuff could use work maybe this stuff can get thrown out you know so i i really can't imagine doing it solely myself like i it's, it's very uh admirable and impressive to me if a songwriter can from start to finish with no feedback at all and put it out is is uh is incredible to me because i feel like i work best with that kind of throwing it bouncing it back throwing it again and then we have the final kind of product you almost feel like uh, there's uh, even the one uh, the solo artist and uh, single person band will obviously likely send their demos out or half completed songs to friends and family because the idea of getting no feedback uh, almost sounds dangerous. It's crazy. Yeah, I, I would be I would be lost. I'd be shooting in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking about feedback, though, man. Uh, the best feedback, or at least sometimes the most important feedback, comes from, obviously, fans and listeners. So, I mean, even with your confidence, the initial first single release and then the build to where we are now, have you found that's really helped Easy Minded in regards to how the full album might be received? Even the latest one, Nowhere, Ohio, which has only been out like a few days, has had incredible yeah. traction. Yeah, man. Yeah, we, um, yeah, we've all been kind of geeking out in the group chat saying uh yeah man i think it's working i think people are really are into it and i love uh the fact that i think people are reacting to it the way we hoped they were to by saying like oh you know this kind of feels like can't swim this this um almost gives me some sort of nostalgia of how they used to sound and yeah i like i like it w i think we uh are completing the goal in which we had which which is an amazing feeling you know never want to get too caught up on the numbers game you know like it's very easy to be looking at spotify being like oh like the last time we put out a song a million people listen to it now only five whatever it is you know so we try not to get caught up on that it's obviously like a car crash you want to look you don't want to look it's like oh geez but uh, i think we, what we've all been saying is that we love that people are laughing well we love that people are singing along like we, hmm. we that we're a, you know yeah we're we're not really hiding behind any type of mask anymore um feels very natural so yeah yeah very lucky well an amazing barometer for you will be come march the third not just on the release of the album but of course the tour of course how the live um crowd reacts to the new music oh yeah oh yeah big time that's another thing All right we get more excited when a kid is like oh i heard this i never heard you guys before like let's say if it was nowhere ohio I'm coming to the Texas show. I'm coming to the California like that. We also in that process of, of trying to decide what to do as a band, we look back on like the live show and that, that is really our career. That's what we do as a band. That's how we make money. That's how we travel. And that's one of the biggest things we enjoy. So when we hear something like that, it's like hitting a million streams, whatever. You know, that's the biggest goal. So uh, yeah, can't wait, man. March and April. Uh, going to be a blast yeah very i feel very blessed to uh still be doing it all this time now you can't ever um compare the uh the individual and personal response of someone who enjoys your music to as you say a statistic on a screen exactly exactly 
Is there a particular song that hasn't been released yet from uh, the new album that you're particularly interested in seeing the reaction to more than any other? Mm. Good question. When you first answer, I'm going to try to go shoot right off the top. Uh, it's the title track. It's the last song. Uh, it's also called Thanks But No Thanks. Um, yeah, I think that one is probably like the heaviest emotionally. Uh, it's also pretty different from other things we've done. It's it's quite stripped down. It's it's not as much as like a pop punky fast mm -hmm. thing. It's like this kind of radio head, low bass kind of... Uh, tortured soul-esque kind of singing um yeah i think that one i don't know maybe will evoke the most emotion so and i also think out of the 10 it stands out the most so i would say yeah that that last song i'm i am the most curious of how people react to it um a personal favorite i loved how it came out um but yeah yeah so i would say that one okay awesome awesome stuff for you then, and this is really just in your opinion and um, perhaps what you've observed over the last uh, couple of years, what is it for you that you think means Can't Swim has resonated with so many people from so many different backgrounds, from so many different countries across the entire world? Man, that's a tough question because it very easily sounds like I'm an egotistical prick. Um, you know, I think I would say that we're pretty um we're pretty transparent you know I, I don't think we we are rock star human beings i don't think like you know you'll have these kids hit me up and say like oh is there going to be a meet and greet in ohio and i said oh absolutely not you can fucking meet me whenever you want <laughs> like there's i'm never gonna pay i'm never gonna have you pay me you're already paying to see these songs i've made you know so i don't know i'd like to think that um, and I've kind of heard that from other band members of, of bands we've toured with or, or people that have come to the show and I've become, you know, I, I'd like to make them feel like they're our friends, not our fans, you know, and, and I think I also like to project the notion that if I can do this, if I can write a song like y'all can certainly write a song or you can draw a picture or you can be creative in some outlet. Like, I think a lot of people try to present themselves that they are above and, you know, the fan base is below. They're on the stage and, you know, you're in the pit. Like, I don't think Can't Swim really has ever acted like that in any in any situation from interviews to interacting with people at the show. Um, and and then and even into our music. I, I don't think it's a very regocious, you know, cocky kind of mentality. So, yeah, I'd like to think that that's why um, so many people have enjoyed it as much as they have. The thing is, considering, you know, 4EP, soon to be four albums, countless live shows, fans and listeners across the entire world, a little bit of ego wouldn't be surprised at this stage. It, even <laughs> without taking that into account, you have to be in awe of what you've achieved in such a short amount of time as well. It, uh, every single day, I laugh at it. It is, it is, it is, uh, like we were, I was talking about something recently with like crazy Spotify numbers and the algorithms and all these, these silly things to me. It's just like, you know, I look at something on Instagram and a dude has like tattooed something that I've written or a design that I've made on his neck or his hand or, you know, or, you know, I've had people say like, Hey, we got married to because of your band or, uh, you know, I lost somebody incredibly significant to me in my life and your song. It's just like, Oh, like, I was sad that it only had 10, 20, whatever. It's, it's you know, it, it puts it so into perspective and it, it doesn't, I don't know if it gives me an ego boost, but it just makes me feel so, so um, lucky. And, and like, you know, and especially because I started Can't Swim when I was 26 and, you know, I worked regular jobs. I was in regular size bands and mm -hmm. bands that would argue all the time. And, you know, like, nothing got done. We, we, we put out no music at all um, for years, like try, tried for years, like 16 year old Chris. Away. Yeah. 16 year old Chris to 25 year old Chris was constantly trying to do something creatively and nothing got done. So I feel, yeah, every day, every show and every release, like you said, uh, very, very lucky. Um, and I'm also a big believer in, you know, it could be the last time. 
could be the last one. Who the hell knows? You know, two years ago, COVID or, you know, uh, labels get dropped and bands get whatever, you know, and it, it could be the last time. And I would be kicking myself so hard if I'm like, man, that was the last tour. And I was I was so, you know, caught up in my voice or the stream number. Who can't like it's just it's yeah. so lucky to to even be out there. So uh, and this record maybe even the most like I really feel like I've come to a place in my life and realized with this album and and this next tour and whatever like uh, how lucky I am to be able to do it you know I'm not sitting and being a garbage man or a plumber you know nothing nothing against those types of professions but like so lucky to do what I'm doing you know so yeah You've earned and uh, deserve all the success that you've had up to this particular point. And Thanks But No Tank Thanks is an incredible new release. Um, I can't wait for people to hear it because I think it's going to be one of those um, albums of where it's, a, dare I say, a turning point when something becomes, it's big already, but becomes even bigger and so on. I feel that's very much the case. And considering you've achieved so much already as well. The last question I have for you before we wrap this up is, is there something that you haven't done yet that you would particularly like to tick off the bucket list this year? Mm. Um, Probably quickest answer comes to my head is tour places we haven't toured. I do believe we are coming back to your lovely neck of the woods uh, end of June for maybe about 10 shows. But uh, we've always kind of joked, but right, maybe, maybe it's not so much a joke anymore. Luckily enough, to do Japan and Australia. Mm -hmm. Those are the, the big ones. Um, uh, yeah, to, to play music in places that I've dreamed to travel would even be a, a bigger dream. So yeah, I would say um, nothing in the works right now, but with the new album rollout and, and some good tours in the States, I really hope we have the opportunity to go over there. And that's what I'm hoping for. <clears throat> Well, it's going to be busy next couple of months anyway. March 3rd is the release day. And of course, the big American tour directly at the same time. Um, Chris, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Good seeing you, my friend. Take care. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please help us out by giving us a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button. If you really liked what you saw, consider donating to keep the website and channel running by buying us a coffee via our coffee page or picking up some merch from our big cartel store. You can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as via our social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as listen to our interviews via SoundCloud, Apple Music, and Spotify. Just search for GBHBL. Games, horror, and heavy metal. What else is life for?